you know, I was making all these noises about talking about when you have to make a noise when you sit down or stand up, it shows you're not as young as you used to be. Well, here's another example of how you know you're not as young as you used to be. We've just had this delivered. Ah! So you what? Just picking it up, making a noise. That's another sign. But look, new printer, new 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 HP printer here. And I'm really excited <laughs> about opening it. How mad's that? How mad's that? Who gets excited about a printer? A new printer? But I'm really excited about opening it. I'm not as young as I used to be. I believe that's another sign. Oh my goodness. All the news is filled with London going into lockdown tier number three. So we'll have to see on the 16th. When is the 16th? It's not that long to go, is it? Must be the middle of next week or something. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens, but more when it happens because things are being, there's yes, debates and phoning shows all over the news and um, you just can't believe what you hear at the moment, so let's just see what happens. But there's a lot of businesses that will be up in arms if London does go into tier three, but anyway, let's find out, let's see what happens. Um, these videos are coming thick and fast now, aren't they? Thick and fast. So, what am I going to talk about today? Let's see. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about my son, who was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when he was 10 or 11, theatre related. Um, but now he's one of the big drag queens in London. I can't, I just cannot give you the new news that's going to be coming out about him that I've got to give you. I cannot do it. I cannot put it in jeopardy, whatever's going to happen. So you'll have to wait for that. But I tell you what, I'll give you a little story about one time we were going to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. When he was 10 or 11, I think he was 10, he was playing the part of Jeremy, which is the boy, the main boy in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. He started off as a chorus of sewer children in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but he was understudy for Jeremy. That's how he started. And then when the boy who was playing Jeremy left, who he was understudy to, he was asked to audition for the main part, and he got it, which was very exciting at the time, very exciting. So he was playing Jeremy, and there, as I said before, there, there are three Jeremys, three Jemimas, three groups of sewer kids, and they're all called something. I forget what they were called, actually. I'll find out and I'll let you know. But um, what they do is they do four performances and then they have two lots of four performances off when group two and group three go on the stage and then they're back on the stage, if you see what I mean. They, they uh, rotate in groups of three, in three groups like that. So they, play, they used to play Monday, one performance, Tuesday, one performance, Wednesday, two performances, a matinee and an evening, or... When they come back, they would do one performance on Thursday, one performance on Friday, two performances on Saturday, which is a matinee and an evening. So it was always one, one, two, one, one, two. That's the way they would rotate every every third group, third half week, if you see what I mean. And we were going up to London. I, I used to bring him up. I, I told you I used to. I've seen the show about twenty one times because it was easier. I was working in London at the time. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, I was working in London at the time and it was easier for me to go to the show because I got to know the box office quite well all the times I've been up there. But it was easier, rather than going home and then going back to London to pick him up in the evening, it was easier just to, from after work just to go to the Palladium in Argyle Street, get a ticket at the box office, buy one spare ticket and I used to get them for 10 quid in the, in the end. It was amazing. Last minute, 10 quid, one seat left, front row of the circle or something like that. It was amazing. I had some brilliant views. And um, if I can get away with it, I'll show you a little video clip I took on the very last night, on his last night. Um, that might be breaking a few copyright laws, I'm not sure, but we'll see if I can get away with showing something to you. But anyway, we were going up to take him to the matinee on the Saturday that he was doing one time. So I was driving into London, 
Of course, being an idiot, I didn't know that this was Gay Pride. It was called Gay Pride then and not Pride. And they closed lots of roads off in London. There were traffic jams everywhere, people everywhere. It was a bit chaotic. And I, I I've had, didn't have a clue what was going on. Um, unbeknownst to me, later on my son will be involved in Pride but quite quite heavily. So, years later... But that's another story. Um, so we were travelling up in the car. We got to London and we hit gridlock. Of course. All the roads have changed. All the roads of, of traffic jam. Can't move for Toffee. And the time is ticking on. He's supposed to get to the Palladium. Half an hour. For the half it's called. Half an hour before the curtain goes up. So I think it went up at half past two. He was due in at two o'clock at the Palladium. And we were in the car, and it was five to two, two o'clock, five past two, ten past two, quarter past two. And we noticed in the car next to us, also in a traffic jam, was someone else. I mean, what a coincidence. Another child and a parent from one of the um, sewer chorus, the sewer kids. They got this big new song called Teamwork in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that they had. One of the songs, and they, there's a few scenes with the sewer kids in, and... Um, so there, um, there we are, totally gridlocked, going to be totally, totally late, because we're only at Trafalgar Square, or so, I don't know, somewhere. I, I, Trafalgar Square seems to ring a, a bell, I don't know why. We seem to be somewhere around there, so a little way from Argyle Street, Great Marlborough Street, from, from Regent Street, from the West End, from the Palladium. We were a little away from there. So what we did was, I stopped the car on the side of the road, probably on a yellow line, I'm sure, on a Saturday. I mean, nowadays it would be towed within minutes, I'm sure. But we left it there. We signalled, Chris went over to the people who were in the other car next to us in the traffic jam. The child got out there, came with us. We ran to the tube station in London went down to the tube station, got on the tube train, went something like five stops or whatever it was um, to Oxford Circus, ran up in Oxford Circus, sweating like anything. Lucky lucky it wasn't now or we wouldn't have passed the Covid test. I tell you where they take your temperatures on the door, we'd have failed that straight away. We, we ran to the Palladium, the stage door, there's nothing like it is now. It, nowadays it's all barred with iron bars across. There's gates across the stage door. You can't get there. But we ran straight down to the stage door. He went in with five, I kid you not, with five minutes to spare before the curtain's due to go up. The poor understudy, Drew, the, the redhead boy who played his... Um, we'll put a photo up of all the sewer kids. Incidentally, see if you can spot Pixie Lot, a very young Pixie Lot, the pop star, in Christopher's, Chrissy's group. They're all there in the photo, and I'll try and point her out to you, Pixie Lot. Really funny. And um, Sassy Strallan's also there, one of the Strallan sisters. Um, there's Scarlet Strallan, Summer Strallan, ZZ Strallan, and Sassy Strallan. All West End stars now, um, done very well for themselves. All, all, I mean, Scarlet Strallan played Truly Scrumptious. She was understudy for Truly Scrumptious, and she took it over for a little while. But um, I digress, definitely. And But Sassy Strallan's also in that group. I'll try and point her out as well. So so there we are. They're, they're, they're all waiting to go on. The poor understudy, Drew, has been put into the flying kit because they have to wear this, this flying harness under their costume because there's a couple of scenes in it when they fly and in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang they fly as well. But the kids fly out of their windmill on one of the... There's a dream sequence when they fly off to the fun fair. When their dad goes off to the fun fair to, to um, make money from his hair cutting machine. <laughs> if you see the film, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you won't know what on earth I'm talking about. But that's fine. Um, so he had his flying harness on. The poor boy had to be... They, they got him out of his flying harness and put it on Chris. Um, with five minutes to go, they, they, they obviously they had this policy that if the... the, the the child who's meant to play the lead turns up, he gets to play if there's a few minutes to spare. So 
he he was put into his costume, makeup, whatever, in five minutes flat, and he went on stage on time, and I went in and bought a ticket, I think. Or did I go back to the car? I can't even remember now. I'll see if I can dig out a ticket on that date, and we'll find out. But I, I do know that my car hadn't been towed, and I didn't even get a parking ticket when I went back for it. And so I think I probably must have gone back for the car, thinking it would probably be impounded by now. But um, amazingly, it wasn't probably because of all the traffic jams. I suppose, I suppose the the, um, the the lorry that takes cars and puts them on the back couldn't get through either. So that's good. But didn't even get a parking ticket. So so we got away with that one. But really lucky. But he got on stage by the skin of his teeth, and Jeremy made it on time. And unfortunately, Drew never, the understudy, never played the part of Jeremy throughout the whole run that Chris did, which was about nine months. He did it for about one whole season, which was six months, I believe. And then he started another season, but his voice started to break. So they had to, unfortunately, the music musical director, the MD, um, could tell that his voice was starting to go. And he took him off and they had to recast it and he had to come out of the show which is a shame, but yeah, so I took a video on his very last night, and I'll see what I can do, um, I've got a, there's a few photos from the video that as well I might put up, and I'll see if I can put a bit of his video up, but we'll see what happens, but yeah, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, with, it started with Michael Ball, started with, um, there was the, who was the child catcher, Lily Savage, who played Lily Savage, um, it was, um, it was the guy who does the you know the dog the dog programs on television now. Um, uh, well, I'm thinking of O'Leary, something like that. It's not O'Leary, is it? Um, anyway, um, Lily Savage did the um, did the child catcher for a little bit. Derek Griffiths did him at first, and then on his last night, it was Wayne Sleep who played the child catcher. And there's a picture of him and a few people. Anton Rogers played the grandpa, um, who's died now, very sadly. Um, he he played the grandpa on his last night. And I've got a picture of him with Chris, Michael Ball. And, um, yeah, fascinating stuff, fascinating stuff. And Gary Wilmot was the last Caractacus Pops that Chris performed with it in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang that played him. Daddy, Daddy. Jeremy, come on, look, back already. I'm really sorry I got in trouble for this um, because um, I, I'm supposed to mention it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you look right down, which way am I you going to be looking at this? Right down here below this corner, there's a little button that says subscribe. If you press that button, you'll be, and, and if you press the little bell next to it especially, it means you'll be subscribed to the YouTube channel and every time we upload a new video, they're going to be coming thick and fast, you'll be notified of the upload. And so you'll just get a notification that will come through to your phone or wherever, however it magically it finds you. And it'll say, would you like to subscribe? Would you like to watch the new video that Sardines has just uploaded? And you can just watch it or bypass it or just leave the notification and whatever it's up to you totally up to you but if you do that that'd be great and i promise you when we get to a thousand subscribers 
I'll do my very best to stop making these silly grunting noises every time I get up and sit down. That's it for now. And buy sardines. There's a link below this video as well to the website where you can register and subscribe to read sardines if you want to. Okay, that's it for now. Speak to you soon. Bye.